everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop the colors into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen here so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, so this is our color palette that we are working with today. So we have our background color, our line color, and then all of our building and window colors down here. So the first thing that we will do is just set our background color. So let's go to the layer menu, find this background color layer, click on it to open our color picker, and we will grab the first color on the first row of the color palette to set it to that light purple color. You could definitely play around with different colors for this drawing. I'm using some purplish, pinkish, bluish colors, but go ahead and change them up if you would like and do something different. Otherwise, our next step, we're just gonna be right on layer one. We are going to grab our second color on the top row of our color palette, and we are going to draw the outline of our coffee shop. I thought about doing a sketch first, but it seems kind of redundant because we can use the grid to help us. So we are just going to go straight into our main line drawing, and then we'll do a little bit of cleanup at the end, and then we'll color it in. So in order to set up our grid to assist us today, we are going to go to the gear icon, click to turn on the drawing guide, click edit drawing guide and select this isometric option. And then we are going to set our grid size because we are going to follow along with a specific, um, you know, design in terms of like how long each of our lines are and stuff. And we're going to use the grid to help us. So I have my grid size set to 305 pixels and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten triangles all the way across. So set it to that, to where each side has full triangles and there are 10 all the way across in a row. Go ahead and adjust your thickness and opacity if you need to so that we can see the lines pretty good. And then click to turn on this assisted drawing button and then click done. Now on this layer one that we're on, we want it to say assisted. So double check for that if it does not say assisted, you can click on it and turn on drawing assist so that we can use the assisted drawing on this layer. And we are going to use our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. We are going to have the size set to about 50% to make our nice lines here. Essentially, I am going to start right in the middle. So this very middle line here, one triangle up from the bottom. So there's this point where they connect and then there's this point where they connect and I'm going to pick this higher one. So right on this point where they connect, I'm going to draw three triangles to the right on this angle and then three triangles to the left on this angle like so. From this middle point, I'm going to draw three triangles up and just try to be mindful and get all of your lines to connect nicely at these points. So redo them a couple times if you need to, to make sure they line up nicely there. But then from this point here, I'm going to go one triangle to the right, one triangle up, and then two triangles to the right, and then all the way down to connect with my first line. And again, you can see here that, you know, my lines overlap a little bit and stick out, but we will clean that stuff up later. Okay, so then from this point also, we will go three triangles to the left and then all the way down to connect with our main first line, like so. From this point, we will go one triangle to the right, one triangle up, and then down to connect with this point here. And then two triangles from this point over and back to connect to this one there. So this is our main shape. So this is going to be where the door is. We'll have a side door over here. 
We'll have like a tabletop rooftop little bar area here to go out and sip your coffee and some doors and we will move the whole shape down eventually because it is obviously off center here but we still want to use our lines a little bit so we'll leave it here for now so the first thing that we're going to do now is draw this rooftop area so we need just like a tiny little lip of the top of the roof showing all the way around so i'm just going to start here and go in a little bit into this middle area right where this corner is draw down this way following that line leaving a little bit of a space drawing this way till we hit this line in the middle drawing up leaving some space drawing over leaving some space down to the middle line again and then connect to our starting point right there like that so we'll see the inside wall here but we want to make the tabletop first, so we are going to start just a little bit in on this kind of bottom line here. Draw a tiny bit out like so, and then draw all the way down to meet this other line like so. That is our tabletop. Then to show this interior wall, I'm going to start a little bit in from the tabletop here. Draw a line till we hit this middle line, and then draw up. So that's kind of our interior wall that we can see. From this point in the middle here, I'm going to draw straight down till we meet the edge. And this is kind of where the, the floor and the wall meet. So now that we have our wall here, I'm going to draw the doors and windows. So I'm just going to kind of find like roughly the center point of this, draw a straight line up, go over a little bit, draw another line, go over on the other side the same distance and draw another line. So these are our two doors, and then these are our two windows. So even though this right one looks a little smaller, that's okay. It's kind of covered by this edge here. But just kind of try to space them out pretty evenly, but it doesn't have to be anything too perfect. And then on each door, I'm just going to make a small little horizontal notch to show like some door handles. Okay, so that's it for our rooftop area. Okay, so now we're going to add the sign in the front and we're going to do this on a new layer because it's going to intersect with our wall over here. So everything that we've drawn so far doesn't intersect with anything yet, but this next part will. So we are going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer, click on it, turn on drawing assist, and we are going to draw the main front sign here on the top of this big wall area here. So I'm going to start on this side, just a smidge down from the top of this wall. I'm going to draw a straight line over touching the next wall and stopping there. From this point where it touched the wall, I am going to draw it out just a little bit. Draw a straight line up and down from that point, and that is going to be the length of our sign, so make it as big or as skinny as you would like. From this bottom point, we're going to draw all the way across, almost touching the edge, but not quite. We will draw a different angle back, that other upper right angle, like so. From this point where they meet, we are going to draw a straight line up, again leaving a small space at the top here to draw that same angle, like so. And then from this point, we are going to draw straight across to connect to that other side. So this is our like 3D sign on the front, like so. We will end up erasing this part later, but not right now, we will leave it there for now. However, on the same layer, we are also going to draw the kind of pillars and inward area of the front of our coffee shop. So it's going to, it's going to like recess in just a little bit to get to the doors, and then there will be pillars on each side. So for example, we are going to start on the right side here on this bottom line. I'm going to go in a little bit further than this like sign is. So I'm going to go in a little further than that make a nice thick pillar here and then draw straight up until we connect to our sign. On this other side, I'm going to do the same thing. So go in a little bit on the bottom, draw straight up till we connect to our sign, but then it'll be a little bit different since we can see the interior of this side, this left side, like we see up here. So from this point where they connect, I'm going to draw in a little bit like this and then draw straight up again right there. And then from this point, I am going to draw over. So this is kind of like our recessed little entryway. So we'll get rid of this main line right here in a little bit, but not yet. 
but then this is where our door is going to be. So let's go ahead and draw our door. So I'm just going to go up, over, and back down. Make a nice big door. Let's make a little window on it. And a door handle. And then we'll maybe draw just some small little windows on the outside. I'm going to make the bottom line a little longer to make kind of a little ledge on the bottom like this. But I want it to be a little bit higher. So see, I drew that whole window and now I want it to be higher. So I am actually maybe going to start with the bottom ledge of the window. So I'm going to draw up from the ground a little, a straight line almost touching both sides here. Draw up and over and down to make a little rectangle right here. And then I'll go in on this side, draw up, go over and down, leaving another little space on this side as well. So something kind of like that, and then I'll do the same thing over here. So again, I'll go up, I'll make the bottom edge of the window, which will probably be blocked by this side of our wall. So I'm going to draw that as my ledge, and then I will draw up for the window and over to the ledge to connect it. So this is my window on the right side, something like that. So they're pretty similar in size. They're not they're not that different, but if yours are very different, you might want to redraw them so they look a little bit more similar. Okay, so that's the main front part of our building now. So next we're going to work on this side over here. So we're going to have like a little recessed door on the right side here that like maybe the staff would enter through. So I'm just going to draw a nice big area like this with a rectangle. And then I am going to draw from this side right here where the bottom and right side meet. I am going to draw a small line in. From that point, a line up and a line over. And this is my door. I'll just draw a little door handle on it like so. So this is kind of my entry door over here. Now that got way too big on me. And this is a separate layer from my main outside shape. So I'm going to grab my selection tool while I'm here, set it to freehand, select this whole door shape, click my arrow tool, set it to uniform, and I'm just gonna downsize this a little bit and kind of keep it right there. So something kind of like that is fine as a small adjustment, or you can redraw it if you need to as well, because when you do downsize stuff, your lines get a little bit thinner. Mine weren't affected too bad, but if you resized something a ton, it would get way too thin. So if you need to redraw it, go ahead. But that's what I'm going to do there. And then on this right side, we are going to have a little sign that sticks off to the right of our building. So it'll be right about here. So I'm just going to draw kind of a square that goes in this direction. So a square like so. And then from this top right corner, I'm going to go out a little bit on that angle. From the end of that, I'm going to draw this way, connect there, and then also draw down and connect there, like so. So that's gonna be my little sign that sticks out. It's also going to, on the left side here, have two little lines that come out that kind of are connecting it to the side of the building. So they just kind of come out right in the middle there. I might want my whole sign to be a little bit higher, so while I'm here, I'm going to use my selection tool, select around it, click the arrow tool, and we'll just move it up just a little bit, right about there maybe, like so. And then just to add some definition to our roof, I am just going to make some lines going this way all the way across, trying to space them out about evenly. like so. Okay, so those are all of the main parts of our building. So first things first, let's go ahead and move this down to kind of recenter it. Since we have two separate layers, we need to move them both at once. So we'll go to our layer menu, on, have this first layer selected, side right on the other one to select it also. Click the arrow tool and we'll just drag it down a little bit trying to keep it pretty much in the center and then center it so that like the top and bottom have about the same space in between them and the edge of our canvas. 
And then we can go ahead and do some cleaning up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is erase these other lines that we don't need. So those are on my main layer, my layer one. First, I'm going to find that layer and click on it and turn off drawing assist so that it's not moving my eraser lines in a way that I don't want them to be moved. Then we'll grab our eraser. I always have mine set to the monoline brush. I have the size at about 40%. And so first of all, let's just go over here and erase the line that goes through our front sign. So just that part right there. And then we also need to erase this main line here, but I think that this bottom line is connected to it. So we just need to be careful that we're not causing too much of an issue when we connect to our bigger line that goes vertically here to create our pillar. So I just kind of be careful near that area. And then we'll erase all the rest of it on the other side as well. And again, same thing over here. We just kind of want to, we just kind of want to make sure that these are still connected nicely, like so. Then we can do some other things too. So for example, like right here, my lines don't come together very good. I can just kind of go in with my eraser to kind of clean that up. Same thing on some of my edges. So this is on my first layer where our main outside shape is. So like over here. And when the lines come together, they have a little bit of a roundness to them. So I just kind of round the corners that I'm cleaning up also while I'm at it. But it doesn't have to be anything perfect from far away. It will look great after we color everything in. Okay, so that looks pretty good for that. If you need to go in with your brush also, you can totally go back in with your brush even with the assisted drawing turned off and just kind of clean up some little areas here and there. Otherwise, I'm gonna switch to my next layer that has some of my more detailed stuff on it. But again, go ahead and click on this layer and turn off drawing assist and clean that up as well. So like my sign got really gnarly you can lower your brush size too if you need to get into some like tighter spaces or if the bigger size isn't working for you go ahead and feel free to do that okay but again it doesn't have to be too perfect i got mine looking pretty good though so we are going to go ahead and move on so the last things that we need to do is just color it in and add our text and our little coffee logo on our sign. So the first thing that we're going to do is add our coffee logo. So I am going to add a new layer on my layer menu, same brush and color the second one in the top row, same monoline brush. This time let's change the size to maybe 30%, a little bit smaller. And we are just going to draw a coffee cup we're not going to use our grid assisted feature. We are just going to kind of wing it. So I'm just going to draw the coffee cup right on here. It's going to be like a to-go cup. So we'll start with the lid. So I will draw a line, hold it down to make the top of my lid and I'll kind of match this angle here at the top of our sign. And I'm gonna draw out on each side, draw another straight line across, hold it down. From this point, I'll draw a line kind of inwards on each side to make like the main part of our cup. Draw another straight line on the bottom, again, kind of matching this bottom angle. And then again, draw two lines in the middle to create like the little sleeve. So a very, very simple little logo there, like so. So go ahead and just make any adjustments if you need to. Otherwise, that looks pretty good. And now we will go ahead and add our text. So we are going to go to the gear icon, click add and click add text. 
it's already selected i'm just going to tap my keyboard to open it up and i'm going to do all caps and i am going to do coffee like so double tap the text to open up the menu and the font that i'm going to pick is going to be this din condensed and then i will increase the size a little bit maybe increase the tracking a little bit as well to kind of space the letters out a little bit so i have my size at about 70 and my tracking at about 10 and then i'm going to grab my arrow tool drag it around to where my sign is if you need to resize it at all you can but the main thing that we're going to do is get it to match this angle of our sign to look like it's on it so we're going to click distort and on the right side here i'm going to grab the middle little blue circle not one of the corner ones drag it down do the same thing on the left side to drag it up until we get it to essentially match these angles so you can see the top of my word and my selection lines up very nicely with the top of my sign. The angles are pretty much perfect. So I might switch it back to uniform just to downsize it a little bit and then center it on my sign here, roughly in the center, like so. Perfect. It will say your text layer is rasterized since we can no longer edit the text since we manipulated it. But now we're just going to do a similar thing for the side here. So I'm going to go to my gear icon, click add, click add text. So now our text is already set to the right font. So I'm just going to open up the keyboard again, caps lock and do cough and then return and then do FEE. -E. So it's on two separate lines. That's what I'm going to place on the side of my building here in this area. So I'm going to triple tap it to select it all. Click the font to open up the menu, and I'm just going to increase the size quite a bit. Increase the tracking maybe a teeny bit. And then we're going to decrease the leading so that my lines are closer together. So I have my size at about 80, my tracking at about 5, and then my leading at negative 15-ish, somewhere in there. And we'll click the arrow tool again, place it over here about where it's going to be, resize it if you need to. Otherwise, we'll click distort again and again, use this right middle button to drag it up, the left middle, middle button to drag it down until like it'll fit nicely in this corner here, the way that we have it, and then place it where we want it right about here in this middle area, just like that. So now they look like they belong with all of the correct angles and everything. So that is it for our line. So now we're just going to do some coloring. So now we can turn off our grid feature. So go to the gear icon under canvas, go ahead and click to turn off the drawing guide. So now we are just left with this. And in order to fill in all of our colors the way that we want to, including our sign and our windows and stuff that are all in separate layers, we need to merge these two layers together, our main two layers with all of our outlines and details. So then we won't be able to edit them separately. So just make sure that you're at a good place to do that. If you need to make any other adjustments beforehand, go ahead. Otherwise we'll go to our layer menu and we'll snap these two layers together so they're all on the same layer. We'll click on this layer and we'll set it to reference. We will add a layer and drag it below it. And this will be the layer that we do all of our coloring on. So go ahead and grab the first color on the second row. This is our lightest purple. We are going to use this on the roof and we are going to have to fill in each of these little lines like so. So I dragged and dropped it, but you can also do this continue when you drag and drop it. You can do this continue filling with recolor at the top. Tap that. Your cursor will drop somewhere random, probably in the middle. But go ahead and just first drag the cursor to the spot you want to fill. So this next line and then tap the other ones to fill them in also. And then with this lightest color, we're also going to tap on the front part of our building down here and the front two sides of our pillar. And that is going to be it for that color. But just go ahead and click the wand icon or something to turn that off so that we're not still doing the recolor. Then let's grab the second color on the second row, same layer, and this is our second color. So we are going to drag and drop this onto the main side of the building here. And we are also just going to drag and drop it on the top right above our sign. 
and then also on this right side of the wall that's showing underneath here. So that's it for that color. Okay, so now we'll grab our next color, the third one on the second row. And this is going to be the floor in here and this little side area around it. And that is it for that color. Next, we'll go to our fourth color on the second row, the darkest one. And this will be the inside of our wall here and the inside of our door area here, like so. If you ever drag and drop it and you accidentally hit a black line, go ahead and undo it and then try again. Don't just continue recoloring because if you change that line area to a color, it will prevent you from being able to fill in other areas sometimes or it'll overlap them or it just kind of gets weird. So make sure you don't end up filling in that line color. If you do, again, just undo it and continue on. Okay, so those are our main building colors. So now we kind of have like our accent colors and our windows left. So let's go to this first color on the last row. And this will be the front of our main coffee sign, the top of our tabletop, our main front door, and the front of our neon little side sign over here. Okay, then we'll grab the second color, the darker one. This will be these two top doors, our side door, and the sides of our signs, and the bottoms of our windows. And then lastly, we have our uh, window color, this third one on the bottom row, to fill in our two side windows up top, our two side windows on the bottom, and this little window on our front door. And with that part done, that completes our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.